what's up guys it's troy p back here for part two of creating a trading plan so as promised this is the document that is overall the document you should use to create your trading plan So in today's video, we're going to be going over the different kinds of components that are in a trading plan, and then we'll end with the confirmation checklist, which we will use in part three to go over actual live trading and executing trades per your trading plan and confirmation checklist. So let's get started. All right, guys, let's get into the actual document itself. Um, this is something I've created to help traders, one, help with the psychology of entering the Forex market, and two, actually have a plan for when they do. So getting into the document, some of the first things that we're going to be looking at is financial goals. So some of the things that I like about trading is the financial freedom it gives you. Traders are allowed to trade and work from wherever they want all around the world, which is super cool to me. Um, I also like not being limited by corporations. That might sound a little bit crazy, but you know, I'm a recent college grad and all my friends right out of college are doing internships and working to get on Wall Street and stuff like that. So they're actually taking a much different approach to than I am to becoming a professional. I really enjoy trading and I'm already good at what I do. So for me, there was no reason to take that path that takes 15 to 20 years to make the decent salary that you need to be happy within your life. So not being limited by corporations, I'm also going to put bosses in there. So right away, um, financial freedom and job limitations are a big part. Um, another reason that I enjoy trading and I am trading is just solely because I enjoy it. There's a lot of things that can rope people into trading. There's a lot of emotions, the adrenaline, the happiness of winning a trade, the sadness that comes with missing a trade is not a reason a lot of people trade, but it can become a very exciting thing to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So enjoy trading itself is definitely a passion of mine and a, a reason that I myself trade. Other financial goals that I can think of off the top of my head is that I helped pay for college and some of the loans that I acquired with it. What else? I can help pay for what the things that, that are important to me in my life. I have a really nice car, my apartment, to travel, which is kind of a little bit with financial freedom. So we're gonna leave things at that, but you really wanna consider why you're trading. For me, this is my job already, so something that could be for you is like, I wanna quit my job. I wanna see my kids more. I want to be able to go out to dinner with my girlfriend every week. Like these are the kind of goals that you should be figuring out ahead of time so that you can come into your trading plan with a cool mentality. So on the right hand side of this goal is your daily routine. So this is gonna, if you watch part one of this series, help you figure out when to trade. So 12 a.m., usually I'm up, I'm not doing a whole lot in the Forex market, maybe just doing a little bit of charting, um, maybe just a little bit of chatting with communities. I'm gonna put charting slash working keep in mind my job is to help educate so 12 a.m charting working 1 a.m is usually when I, i'm starting to prepare for the euro session so i'm going to just put in here euro session prep and usually at 2 a.m is when the euro session volume picks up a good bit so that at this point in time is when i'm going to actually start entering trades so this is dependent on the day of the week as well usually in the earlier part of the week is when i'll be entering trades at around like 2 a.m 3M ESC, um, and this is all part of the Euro session. And I, I apologize for my handwriting not being perfect. I am on an iPad after all. Um, and then this is usually, usually bedtime for me at 3 a.m. out of there. I, I need to wake up the next morning at around eight to get what would be kind of a reasonable five hours of sleep, six hours of sleep, wake up at eight or 9 a.m. And then when that happens, that New York session is going. So I'm checking my trades, I'm charting, and I'm just ensuring everything is going okay. And if it's not going okay, I'm finding new setups. If my trade stopped out or if it hit take profit, I'm finding new setups. So you can see that this is my, my block out zone. And you don't have to be, you don't have to be practicing Forex as much as I do all day. Um, it is my job after all at 12 PM noon. That is actually when the Euro sessions ending and New York volume starts to die off. So I actually leave 12 to five 
as a work period. I, I meet with people, um, I chat within groups on Discord, Elite Signals, and I just make sure that people are understanding what happened in the trades that I took. So that's kind of my schedule. And then around this time, I will be coming in and charting, maybe make a video like this around 6 p.m. And then we're just gonna say the rest is working free time. That's my schedule. It's probably going to be much more different than yours will be. You probably have a job. You probably have kids. You probably have family, friends, whatever, where you are. Not that I don't have that stuff, but so that you are just going to be on a different time, time zone. You might not have this Euro session time that I have. You might be asleep by like 10 p.m. So just overall tweaking this daily routine um, will help you feel a little bit better. Next up, we have our account growth timeline. So this is super important to you helping find your overall monthly return, which for me is usually around 20%, which is my overall goal every month to make 20%. So let's get started with this account growth timeline using that 20% per month. So say I start with $5,000 as my starting balance. And after one week uh, and seven days, if my overall monthly goal is 20%, that means I should be making around 5% per week. So let's get in here, 5,000 times 0 0.05 is going to be uh, $250 I would make. So my after that would be 52.50. After another week making 5% and compounding interest, 5,250 will be times 0 0.05 again, since we're only two weeks out, 262.5 plus 2,250 equals 5,512.50. So after a month of trading, and obviously after another two weeks of compounding interest since our last growth date, we will have 5,512.50 times 0 0.1, because remember, we are doing compounding interest here. We will be at 6,603.75, 63.75. And then obviously I'm not gonna fill out the rest because there's no need to keep doing this, but you see um, the effects of compounding interest. This is really gonna add up. And then part of your trading plan you should have is a minimum withdrawal balance. So whatever you feel comfortable with in terms of like the balance you're okay with, remaining in your account versus when you're okay with pulling it out, totally up to you, something you'll have to figure out for yourself. Growth goals up next. Growth goals are super helpful to just you generally as a person. You can use these outside of investing too. But say I wanted to save for a car, pay rent. Say if it doesn't really go with the last two, but say I just wanted an, another source of income. Say I wanted to save for retirement. These are all good examples of growth goals. So that is generally like the psychological planning that we're knocking out of the way now. Um, now we can kind of move on to the actual trading plan itself. So I would consider that to be part of the trading plan, but this is actually um, really where the Forex terms apply. So the session, I'm going to start getting a little bit more actually into what I do and examples of what I would use. So session trading, which ones I like to trade? I like to trade both the Euro and the New York and the overlap between it. So I trade both sessions. I, I really like when they overlap right like that. And then trading time. So 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when the Forex exchange market opens. And then the New York session doesn't close until 4 p.m. EST. So 3 a.m. to 4 p.m. EST, which is a very large range. It's 13 hours. The trading style. I'm much more a day and a swing trader than a scalper or a long, long, long term time, time frame trader. Um, so day and swing Number of trades, I will have no more than three trades per day. And then time frames I use because I use both day and swing trade. I use the 30 minute, the one hour and the four hour the most. I do look at all time frames, but those are the most helpful pips per trade. If I want to, on average, bring in around 20 pips per trade. And because each of your stop losses are around like 30 ish pips, 20 to 30 ish pips, I shoot for 50 pips 
per trade so that you're actually still profitable long term if you're around 50% win rate. I made a video on this, why 1% doesn't matter. Make sure you check that out. Pips per day. I'm cool bringing in around 20 to 50 pips per day. Usually a trade takes like two days, three days to play out in a swing trade. So I'm cool with 20 to 50 pips a day. Not every day is going to be a win, so don't force it. Pips per week. I would like to clear around 200 pips a week, which would bring me at a, right around 1,000 per month and we will just make the goal a thousand per month. So this is what a pip goal and a win and how to trade would look like. Super helpful. This will help you long-term stick to, and you will change it all the time, but it will help you stick to what you're learning and practicing. So list of tradable currencies. I, I In the last video, I said you shouldn't choose too many. My top three are Euro US dollar, the pound US dollar, and then the Euro pound. Over here, if you are a little bit more of a risk taker than I am, you might put gold us dollar you might trade us 30 i don't trade any of these so they're not actually part of my trading plan but that's where these would go nas 100 say you like to trade stocks on uh, mt4 as well those and, and say maybe crypto here so you might be starting to see like what why it's good to know what you're going to trade ahead of time because it'll help you not keep so many trades open at once and help keep your he head clear so um, percent risk per trade getting into risk management super 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 important and i will make another video on this but i have before risk per trade i keep a 1.75 percent um stop loss of my total account size to so say i still have that five thousand um, dollar sorry my computer say i have a five thousand dollar account i'm risking only 1.75 percent per trade at 5,000 times 0 0.0175 is going to be, I won't, won't want to risk eight, more than $87 per trade. So that's just something you could note if you are actually actively using that $5,000 account. Um, and then you could also note it in here as well. The next up, our risk reward ratio. I like to keep no lower than a one to two risk reward. And the maximum number of losses I will take in a day is two and in a week is five helps me a lot with the psychology so these are things that you'll have to figure out for yourself so here comes the important parts this is where we start to develop the confirmation checklist everything you've done so far leading up to this point is part of your trading plan your trading plan also comprises the confirmation checklist which is perhaps the most important part in in all of trading so possible setups a lot of people will use the head and shoulders and the ascending or descending triangles as part of their trading plan. So what a confirmation checklist could look like is something like pattern setup. And you would have to specify the correct time frame. So on the one hour or four hour is where I would use these pattern setups. And then the next thing I would make sure is that fundamental clarity. So in the last video, I said that this was much more uh, a technical analysis practice, this confirmation checklist. It's really not. It will actually really more depend on how you want to trade anyways. The list will be much longer if you're trading technically and fundamentally. A fundamental checklist might look like don't trade during NFP, make sure the news and announcements for the week look good before entering, and then just make sure there's no upcoming events. Like that could be a really brief fundamental checklist. For my personal checklist, I have both fundamental and technical analysis factors in it. So continuing with what I said is fundamental clarity. What that means is no big news events. We don't want to trade through those. If, if you have all of the technical analysis in the world, it could still end up a little bit of a bad trade if the fundamental factors aren't there. So moving on, candlesticks are something I really like. Um, I use them with support and resistance, but I'm going to say candlestick close. And it depends what you're using, but say like you're using this head and shoulders for the example of the pattern set up on the one hour and the four hour, you would wait for this candlestick right here to close below this resistance zone right here. You would wait for it to close. So when we talk about a candlestick close below S and R, we're talking about that exactly as we want it to close below that point on the one hour or four hour. The reason for that is because it closes on the five or the 15 minute, that could just be part of a candlestick wick on the later out time frame. So um, candlestick closes below. Another thing that I could use is overall trend. 
bearish for this example. And what I mean by that is if you zoom out to the one hour and four hour, say below, let's say something, say the true pattern looks something like this, and then it's doing that. This is still all overall part of a bearish trend. Hopefully you can see that. So overall bearish trend, make sure you're using enough data to confirm that it's a bearish trend. So another two things that I can think of off the top of my head is Fib levels. And I'm not going to get into Fibonacci today, but Fib levels could be on there. And then the last thing just off the top of my head that I can think of is say you find like a doji candlestick, which um, indicates a reversal incoming. So this is a very candlestick based overall confirmation checklist because we have candlesticks confirming here, 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 and a little bit of right here. So this is a very um, candlestick-esque trading plan. This is something I do use a lot, but I have a lot more that I could put on here fundamentally that I won't ramble on about because will be super confusing. All right, guys, so that was pretty much it for me filling everything out. Hopefully you guys can have a look and see what I am showing you guys here. Make sure that you are investing smart. Make sure you have all of your monetary goals there ahead of time. And then you can actually get into your trading plan itself of making sure that you're figuring out when to trade, how to trade it, what you're looking at, um, what you want your returns to be. So this overall just worksheet is going to be in the bio. The description will lead you to a Google Doc where you can then download it from. Hopefully you'll use it. Hopefully you can leave some good feedback if it helps you. Comment, like, subscribe if you need to reach me. I'm Troy P. I am in the Elite Signals Discord and I will see you guys on Thursday for part three where I live trade using this strategy right here, as well as some indicators to find trades in the market. So see you guys then.